We show that usually every uh, Monday night. The only term that goes all the way to age 95, regardless of your health, yeah. okay? And so uh, all the other companies, they, um, you know, so re they guarantee, our company guarantee renew regardless of their health. So that means that, you know, if, they're, if their term, uh, if our term once, let's say they start a 20-year term, Mario, right. after 20 years, they don't have to requalify. Does that make sense? It, it, it will go all the way, it will stay level all the way to age 70. It will just be a readjusted under a tain age, but they don't have to requalify. Okay? That's big. Okay? Other companies, I, I, you know, I had a New York Life uh, confrontation, right? He was worrying about our term insurance, and we sat down, right? And so I said, you know, my term after 20 years, so my client would be around 55 years old, it will readjust it under a tain age, and it will be relocked again for another 15 years. Until age 70, and then from there we'll go in blocks and it will go into annual renewable term. And so, and then he's like, No, I don't believe it. Well, let's call the company because New York Life term, it will go until 20 years, and then and then after 20 years it goes into annual renewable term. Does that make sense? Now, if my client doesn't want to, they don't want to um, requalify or they don't want to apply for the new program, that's okay. Their policy will go all the way to age 70 at least with a level premium. Right, and so the, those are one of the benefits that other companies they don't provide. Now they can provide if as long as they you know if they convert it to a whole life insurance, they convert it from term to permanent insurance. They they don't have to prove insurability, right? So, but if they want to stay a term and they want to renew for another you know 15 year term, another 20 year term, they have to prove insurability. Yes. With our company, they don't have to. Big, right? right? It's huge. Okay, that's uh, that's one of the uh, one of the big things that uh, you wanna you wanna you know uh, point it out, right? Uh, no exclusion clauses, no war, no terrorists. I mean, uh, you know, there's we pay everything, right? Obviously, there's only one thing that every insurance companies don't cover, which is for the first two years is suicide. But that's every insurance company. And by the way, if they have a um, if they already have a policy and it's been more than two years, Mario. Our company would honor that two-year period of suicide. Yeah. So they don't have to start all over again on that two years. So if they want to switch with us because we're going to have more coverage for them and they want to just commit suicide, they can. If it's a year and a half, what would that be? What is the process of Two years. <laughs> so if they so if they already been two years with Allstate and they switch with us, and uh, we don't. We're not going to start that two-year suicide clause all over again. We honor those two years that they already had with them. But what okay? if they've been late? Like year, year and a half. Year and a half. They only get like the six months. Same time. If it's like a year and a half, they would get six months. Uh, if they, if it's, oh, if they can be suicide before the two no, years. No, no, they, uh, they have insurance, but they had it for a year and a half. So we just grant the, uh, you know, the, the, the six months. Yep. Mm -hmm. We have that. Okay, we don't have to we all the time. Whoever, who, who wants to sell a book with uh, 101 ways of suicide? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's, uh, we own all the time they use the life insurance we with the other company. Yep. Yeah. As long as it's so an individual least, policy. Okay. Yep. Okay. And you are replacing that policy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I have a question about the not, not, not exclusion, no war, no uh -huh. terrorism. Yeah. If I remember right, I saw the on a simulator. Yeah. That it says uh, they do not exclude the professional pilots, but they do exclude the, like if you if it's your hobby, if you have your own plane. By the way, that you know the simulator might is more like a, to pass, to help you oh, pass sure. the test. The, the over here is our company. company. Yeah. They might not get a preferred rate. Because they have dangerous sports, they are engaged in dangerous sports like scuba diving or they're you know parachuting or you know they're you know a crew aircraft pilot you know they're you know they're engaged with that kind of sport. They get rated. They're not at a preferred rate. They can't qualify preferred because they're at a risk. That those those sports are risky. You know. But they can qualify. Yeah. So are you saying that they don't qualify if they're in the military and stuff? Because no, we what do. What are you saying? No war. What do you, I don't understand. Meaning no war, like no war clause. There's other policies that have the war clause, which means that if you die and in, 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 if it's war, if, it, if it's active war, they don't pay. We have the no war clause, meaning 
if, if even if it's act of war, even if they go to Iraq, if they go to war, stuff like that, we pay. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, that's huge because yeah. you know, especially if you're talking to somebody in the military, because a national guard will only give them about it depends on their rate ranking. Okay. Uh, usually, you know, regular ranking, they get about four hundred thousand dollars in coverage. Now, as they become a lieutenant, and, uh, you know, all those ranking they become less risky, right? Because they're not in the front lines, you know, shooting people. They're like more, you know, commanding, right? So they have less risk, so the company allows them to get more coverage, okay? Now, so they, they get 400000 but those $400,000, they're only covered when they're in duty or, in, or in, when they're in active war or when they're in training. If they come home, and they're in a two-week vacation, they come home, they're not in training, they're not in duty, they're not in, in active war. They're not, that National Guard policy does not cover. They died at home from a heart attack, they don't get nothing. Yeah, and you can watch, you can Google it on Fox News, there was a Silver Star uh, soldier that was, was coming back from the training with his unit, and because the home was super close, he went and, sl and to sleep at home, just kind of checked his family, but he was still like, in a, you know, coming back from training, right? And he died that night. And the National Guard was like, oh, having a hard time paying. But because, and because he died at home. But because that was, you know, coming back from training, so he was still, in, you know, he just, instead of sleeping with the unit, he slept with his family. Uh, you know, I guess they paid out. But it was a fight. It was even on Fox News and stuff like that. And, 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 and it shows the graphic of the verbiage on, on the contract. So I have that on my personal email. So whenever I'm sitting down with a client, boom, I can show that, right? I pull up my email, and let me show you something, right? Or YouTube it, boom, put in your YouTube account, your favorite videos, and have all your videos, because what you want to do, you want to be prepared, right? Yes. So then whenever you run into something like that, you're prepared, and you can show some stuff like that. So, oh, really? Oh, I didn't know about that. Yeah, that's the reason why, da 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 da, -da right? So you can go on and on. Uh, most affordable renew rates in the market. Most affordable renew rates in the market, meaning once they renew the policy, the back end, are, you know, the back end rates are cheaper than anybody else in the market. And so that's huge because if I'm competing, you know, if I'm like, you know, competing with the client on their, what they already have, Oscar, I'm not, I'm not only going to see what they're paying right now, but I'm going to compete what they're going to be paying 10 years from now. Does that make sense? Because uh, maybe their policy is about to expire maybe five years from now. And say, hey, Mr. Ms. Klein, you know, with us, I can relock you at this, 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 and that, you know. And then with us, in, in, in five years, you'd be still paying a lower amount. With you guys, in five years, you'd be like, your premium will skyrocket, yeah. right? And then every year thereafter, it goes into annual renewable term, right? With us, we can, uh, so solid track record, $1 billion paid in benefits in 2011. That's $2.6 million a day on average. Average of 14 days payout. That's average, okay? Now, I've seen my personal client, three days payout. We submit a claim, and, uh, you know, in three days we had a check. So, but the average payout, 14 days, okay? So, which is big, right? I mean, most companies, they take forever to pay the, you know, pay the claim. And uh, one policy per family, one child rider for all, uh, of, covers all kids. So up to what age? 24? 25. 25. Yeah. Question on that with the child rider is yeah. that if say one child were to die one day and then three months later another child dies, do they have to repurchase the rider or is that? No, no, the rider stays yeah. So for all the kids, yeah. Yep. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and, and we're gonna uh -huh. and uh, the child has to live at home or oh no, yeah, that's a good question. The child does not have to leave at home, okay? The child may leave in Mexico, yes. okay? We cover them, mm -hmm. all right? They don't have to leave with the parents. So you have to answer that if it leaves with a guardian or parents, yes or no. You could know if they live in another country or maybe they're separated, they leave with the mom, right? And that's buying the policy or vice versa, right? So you have a question. Sorry. Uh -huh. They have to be single or they can be married too? As far as no, that's the, the child. child. The child? Oh, the child doesn't matter. I mean, as long as they're below 25. Oh, okay. Yeah. And if uh, once they turn 25, does the coverage drops and the premium drops automatically? Yep, the coverage, yeah. So if that's the only child that was in the policy, mm -hmm. then that six, the, like, if it was $10,000 in coverage on the child, the $6.18 will drop automatically. 
But then that's why you license agents, there's a tool you know, on the internet, on the POL, that you can check life uh, uh, conversion, child writing conversions. That you can say, hey, you know, Ivan, hey, I noticed that your, your, your youngest now is turning 25, man. Hey, you know, I, you know, uh, so you, you know he's going to get out of your policy, but I was wondering if I can meet with them. Is he, how is he doing? You know, and, and then you can meet with the son, you know, so you can write him an individual policy. Yeah. Now, if they, have, if they have medical conditions, they will get automatically five times more of what they have coverage with us, up to 125000 with no medical. No medical. Exactly. Uh -huh. I mean, where they feel, whoever's going to be in charge of that child, I mean, it all depends on the amount of coverage you're putting, um, you know, how old is the child, if they're almost knocking 18 years old, or if they're, yeah. Well, you want to leave something where, who's going to be responsible of the, of the child, right? You want to leave something to that person, okay, who's going to be responsible in case you pass away? So then, because until they become grown and independent, then, you know, shelter, food, clothing, school, and, you know, it costs a lot of money, right? So you want to make sure that person is not going to be left to hanging. The, the child only gets paid when he turns 18, right? Correct. Once, once they're 18, they can get their share. Mm -hmm. So I should put in, like, a child liner instead of a little you can, you can, if, if they want to cover the, the kid, yeah. So, and let's say if I'm a grandparent, I'm the guardian of my grandkids, I can put them as well. So you go son, daughter, and grandkids. So they can change it if they come here. They could, but they have to be a legal guardian, right? Yeah, you got to be a legal guardian, or, yeah, I mean, they have to be living at home with you. So just so I understand, when, when a child is a minor, and we put them as a beneficiary, they'll never get any money in if correct. They, yeah, correct. Is that correct? Yep. So putting him in that example right now as a beneficiary is probably not a good idea. Yeah, because they will not get anything until 18. Okay. So you, all, you always want to put somebody else who's going to be in charge of it. Well, I, they can, they Mama, can, dad, grandpa, brother, sister, in law, something like that. I mean, somebody that you trust. What do companies do with that money? When they, they put it in an interest account. But they hold it, they, they hold, hold it. it and they put it in an interest account so he earns interest. Yep. What if they do not have anyone to represent the kid? If they don't have anyone, yeah. then you can just put it as the agent. Put you as a beneficiary. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, they have no one? Yeah. No one like, you know, in case something happens, my kid's like alone. So when they go into like state custody? Yeah, the, the, it, it goes, yeah, it goes to the state because it belongs to the state until they're 18. Um, and then they go to foster care. And so foster in that home. case, the state will be the next year. Yeah. Huh? In that case, the state will. No, be I'll put I'll put my child. If I have nobody, I'll at least at least I'll give to my child yeah. until until they're turning eighteen. Yeah. So the company keeps the money. So what he's exactly. Yeah. They they put it in an interest account.